Hi, um, welcome to Tokyo Philosophy Project. Um, today's guest is Professor Yujin Nagasawa. Hi. Hi. <laughs> And, um, welcome to Tokyo Philosophy Project. Thank you. Thank you for mm-hmm. having me. Mm-hmm. And he is now a、um, professor at the University of Birmingham. And also, he is the co director at John Hick Center for Philosophy of Religion.、Um, and he has published Uh, many books, including、uh, Maximal God, A New Defense of Perfect Being Theism.、Um, this book was published by Oxford University Press in 2017. And also, he published、uh, Miracles, a very short introduction.、Um, this is、uh, from Oxford University Press、uh, the same year, 2017. So, first, I would like to ask you. Um, about John Hick.、Mm-hmm. So, you are the, the co director of the John Hick Center of the university. And so, for us, John Hick is a really a big name.、Mm-hmm. So, and you are the co director at the center. So, have you met John Hick、uh, when he was、um, alive? Yeah, so I、mm-hmm. arrived in Birmingham in 2006.、Mm-hmm. And、uh, John Hick passed away in 2012、mm. at the age of 90.、Mm. So oh, I was very、90. fortunate to, yeah, to、uh, have known him for six、mm-hmm. years.、Uh-huh. So, do you have any uh, very, um, interesting e p i s o d e or something about him? So, many of his、uh, interesting episodes are、mm-hmm. described in his autobiography, which、uh-huh. has been translated into Japanese. Oh, really? Oh, I didn't know、yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> But one memorable、mm-hmm. story that he told me,、mm-hmm. and also he describes in his.、Uh, Autobiographies that、mm-hmm. he had an interesting spiritual experience.、Mm-hmm. So he learned、um, meditation techniques、mm-hmm. he, from his uh, uh, Indian friend.、Uh-huh. So he was practicing meditation every day.、Mm-hmm. And he says that one, one day、uh, when he had a meditation and he opened his eyes,、mm-hmm. then he thought that there was no boundary between his own existence、mm-hmm. and the external world.、Uh-huh. And he felt that it was a very pleasurable experience. And he、mm-hmm. thought that. You know, there is nothing to worry about. And、mm. that, that was a deep spiritual experience that he、mm-hmm. had.、Um, another story that I remember is that、um, one of his sons,、uh, mm-hmm. called Michael,、mm. uh, died in a tragic accident、oh, in Switzerland、okay. uh-huh. when he was only 24.、Oh, really? And h i c k said that、uh, after he passed away, he saw the son in his house.、Oh. Uh, but he didn't think that that was his ghost or anything.、Mm-hmm. He was, John Hick was a very、uh, careful uh, thinker.、Mm-hmm. So he didn't really、uh, accept these、um, supernaturalistic claims,、mm-hmm. even though he himself was a supernaturalist and theist and、mm-hmm. mind body dualist. But he was a very cautious、mm-hmm. thinker. So、uh-huh. he didn't really think that that was a proof of some spiritual existence.、Mm-hmm. But th- that was a very important experience for him、mm-hmm. as well. Oh, that's very interesting. So, just、mm-hmm. you said,、um, so he. he Um, he, he seems to have、um, very strong influence from the,、um, the religion, religions around the world,、yeah. and especially、uh, Indian philosophies.、Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think he was a real pioneer、mm. because、uh, <clears throat> when he was re- young,、mm. almost all philosophers of re- religion were. Christian philosophers,、mm, yes. and、uh, they didn't really look at、uh, non Christian traditions.、Mm-hmm. But he said that you know, we have to take religion seriously.、Mm-hmm. So we have to look at、uh, both Christian、uh, religion、mm-hmm. as well as non Christian religions.、Mm-hmm. So I think he's a pioneer of,、uh-huh. uh, of, the, of, uh, of the global approach、mm-hmm. to the philosophy of religion.、Mm-hmm. So, so、um, sometimes his philosophy、uh, of religion is called plural, pluralism、mm. of、um, religions. Right. Uh, so, um, do you agree with him、uh, in, in terms of, you know,、uh, look at the world religions、mm-hmm. from the、um, pluralistic worldview?、Mm-hmm. So, I think I'm very sympathetic to his 
general global approach. Mm. But I'm not entirely sure if I could fully subscribe to his religious pluralism. Mm. Um, I think there's several problems uh, mm. with well, religious What kind of problems? Uh, so for example, <laughs> <laughs> I think one main problem mm. is that, so basically he says that all religious traditions, mm -hmm. they basically talk about the same thing. They look mm -hmm. at the uh, what he calls the the real with mm. a capital R mm -hmm. transcendental uh, reality mm -hmm. beyond our existence. Mm -hmm. so B Buddhism, Hinduism, Christianity, uh, Islam, and so on. They all talk about the same ultimate reality mm -hmm. from different cultural perspectives. Yes, yes. But I, I tend to think that that's a quite a simplistic way of looking mm -hmm. at the religion. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the beauty of religious diversity is that they are mm -hmm. so fundamentally different that they mm -hmm. make quite distinct claims. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a little bit simplistic to say uh -huh. that they are all the, you know, they, they are making the more or less the same claims. Mm -hmm. So I think some people say that, you know, um, basically the religion is a uh, one mountain mm -hmm. and the, and, the so, and there are different routes right. to go um, cl 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 climbing yeah. to yeah, the top. Yeah. So do you, do you think this kind of analogy or imagination is um, a good, um, good or yeah, I think bad. John Hick would uh, uh, agree with that. I think mm -hmm. he would like this kind of analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, often people also talk about um, about an elephant. Mm -hmm. So if uh -huh. there is an elephant, maybe mm -hmm. a blind person yeah, yeah. touches the mm -hmm. skin and describe it as a, an mm -hmm. animal with a rough skin. Mm -hmm. And if you can see an elephant, you might say that uh, there is an animal with a big trunk and mm -hmm. so on. So there are many different ways of describing the same thing. And then Hick says that you know religion mm. is just like that. Different yeah. traditions talk about the same mm -hmm. uh, transcendental ultimate reality from different perspectives. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't know. Again, I'm quite uh, critical uh, mm. about the, his view. So um, if we um, take on such a pluralism in a re um, philosophy of religion, what do you think? Do you think that a kind of atheism or agnostic um, position could be included in that um, diversity of religion? Yeah, that, what that's, do you think? A, that's a very good question. Uh, I remember that he gave a talk on religious pluralism uh, towards the very end of his life. Mm -hmm. He gave a talk in our department. Mm -hmm. And someone asked the exact same oh, question. Really? Uh -huh. And uh, if I remember correctly, he said mm -hmm. that uh, atheism or um, naturalism mm -hmm. could be included uh -huh. if, if these atheists or naturalists, they share common ideas, mm -hmm. um, That's especially with respect to morality. Uh -huh. yeah, but I'm not sure about the metaphysical claims, like, mm -hmm. like you know, there is a supernatural being mm -hmm. or there is a uh, ultimate reality beyond the material mm -hmm. universe. And so mm -hmm. obviously materi materialists or naturalists or atheists would want to reject uh, mm -hmm. uh, such a claim. Okay. So, um, so this time you are going to give a keynote speech in the coming um, our international conference on philosophy and meaning in life. And the title of your paper is Pro-Immortalism and Anti-Immortalism. Mm. So very uh, <laughs> stimulating title. <laughs> and would you give us a simple overview of mm. your argument? Right. So I wrote this paper. Mm -hmm. I decided to write this paper when I received an email from a reader of my work. Mm -hmm. So he says that he, he suffers from aperophobia, mm -hmm. which is a fear of immortality yeah. or infinity. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that there was a condition like that. Mm -hmm. But he says that he is really scared of, scared of the idea of living forever mm -hmm. because he mm -hmm. thinks that he'll be bored eternally mm -hmm. and he, mm -hmm. it will be very depressing. Yeah. Uh, but another interesting thing is that he's also a Christian, mm -hmm. so he doesn't <laughs> want to think that death is the end of his existence. Mm -hmm. So he's afraid of death as well. So mm -hmm. he suffers from thanatophobia, the fear of yeah. death, which is more mm -hmm. common, I think. Mm -hmm. So he has these two conflicting fears, and I wanted mm -hmm. to find out you know, which one is really better between mm -hmm. immortality and mortality. Mm -hmm. So in my talk, I will assess various arguments for pro-immortalism, mm -hmm. the idea that uh, uh, immortality is more desirable than mortality. Mm -hmm. And the several arguments for pro-mortalism, mm -hmm. which says that it is more desirable to be mortal than mm -hmm. immortal. Yeah, so um, so hearing your uh, your supervisor, you, uh, uh, your friends, um, does, uh, uh, t t talking about, you know, so he, he or she um, have, have um, fear against 
Uh, more, more, uh, the mortality and mm. also immortality. Right. Yeah. So <coughs> I, I'm very sympath. I sympathize him with him because um, me too. I, I have a fear. Of course, I have a strong fear about my own death. Mm. But also, um, when I, if I imagine that I have to live forever, mm. that makes me feel very <laughs> scary. Right. It's a scary, scary, very scary con mm. condition mm. for me. You know, can you bear? That condition, so we have to we we live forever, mm. and um, waking up, you know, in the morning and mm. sleep at night and then the night and eternally. Mm. Mm. So that, it sounds like your thing. fear is very similar to this person's yeah. fear. Um, before writing this paper, I thought it would be irrational to fear immortality and mortality at mm. the same time, but now I'm inclined to think that actually it is rational because mm -hmm. there are so many different forms of immortality and mortality. Mm -hmm. um, I think the so source of fear is that um, death is very scary because if death is the end of our existence, mm -hmm. then when we die, that's it and there, there won't be anything. Mm -hmm. um, and the fear of immortality is that, okay, if, if we can survive our deaths, mm -hmm. that sounds initially better and people mm -hmm. tend to imagine heaven or somewhere nice when, when they think about the afterlife. But mm -hmm. it's not obvious because there are so many different models of immortality mm -hmm. or the afterlife. Yeah. So you know, immortality can involve a very long, very boring mm -hmm. uh, existence, mm -hmm. and which might be very, very depressing. And yeah. I think this uh, unpredictability is very, very scary because we don't yeah. know what, what happens next. Yeah. So in, <clears throat> in ancient Indian thoughts, so they believe that there are um, may some five or six universes and mm. we reincarnate right. one, one, universe, <coughs> one universe to the other universe. So, so we mm. have to um, go round and round mm. and round and we have, in a sense, we have to live forever. Mm. But, uh, if the, uh, but in many cases, you know, living in the universe is basically mm. uh, full of pain and suffering. Mm. So we have to um, have and suffering and pain and and round and round and, mm. and forever. So, um, if thinking like this, mm. this also makes us very um, depressing. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So reincarnation is a one form of immortality. Mm -hmm. So yes. you go through many different phases. Yeah. And as you say, maybe in each phase, uh, there are a lot of pain and suffering, yes. and that maybe that's a requirement to go mm -hmm. through these uh, this kind of process, mm -hmm. and that that's very scary as well. Yeah. So uh, Christians and uh, people in the Western tradition they tend to um, imagine a linear form of immortality mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. you just uh, go to heaven or somewhere and you just exist forever or mm -hmm. timelessly. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, this kind of cyclic model is a possibility as mm -hmm. well. And this is again, you know, there, there's an unpredictability here, and we don't know what will happen, and yeah. that, that's quite scary. <laughs> yes. <clears throat> and in your paper, uh, you argue that um, the promoterism is not considered overall bad, so mm. there is a um, um, good aspect of them, mm. and bad aspect of mm. them, and also there are several arguments mm -hmm. um, among, you know, um, promoterism. And also, there are um, several arguments in immortalism. Mm. So we, we, can, we can't say either that mm. immortalism, immortalism is not considered... Mm -hmm. uh, so, um, I'm sorry. So immortalism is not considered overall. This, so mm. um, this is your argument. Right. Yeah. So, but does this mean that the answer to the question of mm. how to consider the goodness mm. or badness of mortality mm -hmm. or immortality. So it, that depends on each other's right. world view of e each other's yeah. uh, choice. choice. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How do they think? Uh, that? Yeah. What, what do you think about it? Yeah, that, that, that's a good question. So some people say that immortality is bad because that's very boring mm. or you can always postpone things in immortality. So your existence would be meaningless. Mm. Or some other people say that mortality is bad because if, if death is the end, then there is no punishment for bad people and reward for good people. Mm. So there is no ultimate justice. Or some other people would say mortality is bad because you cannot make any permanent uh, moral difference mm. uh, uh, to, to the world. Um, so there, there are so many arguments for and against the desirability of uh, immortality and mm. mortality. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, it's quite uh, tempting to say that, okay, then maybe ultimately it's just a matter of uh, personal point of view. Yeah, yeah. And I think people tend to say, make a similar claim about the meaning of life as well. Mm, yes. So some people say that you know, as long as you're happy or satisfied, then your life is meaningful. Mm. And it doesn't really matter what you achieve or what mm. kind of conditions you can meet. Um, but uh, I think that, okay, this subjective element is quite important. But I think there has to be something objective as well. So even if you are totally happy and satisfied, mm. if you don't achieve anything objective, then it looks like your life is not that meaningful. Mm. And I think we can apply the same argument uh, to immortality too. Mm -hmm. So even if you are perfectly happy and satisfied in immortality, um, you, know, you, you could still have trivial existence mm. if you don't achieve anything. So mm. I think there is a, a parallel structure between life and the afterlife mm. here. Okay, so that's very interesting. And also I, uh, I, I'd like to ask you one question. Mm. Um, I, um, I remember one person say that he, so basically he wished to live forever, mm. but at the same time he said that when he wants to die, he wants to the freedom to die. Mm -hmm. So um, his position is he, what he uh, actually want mm -hmm. is the um, freedom of mm -hmm. choice between mm -hmm. immortality and mm -hmm. mortality. Right. So uh, hearing that he, and him saying that, uh, that I think it uh, might have some, mm, uh, so I was almost persuaded by his <laughs> right, right. argument. Yeah, yeah, so for yeah. what, what do you think? So, so such kind of you know, yeah, uh, the self, um, yeah. choice, free choice between right. the, this is a, a, the best uh, uh, solution to the problem of mortality or mm. immortality. Right. Yeah, that, that's a very interesting suggestion, I think. So mm. basically, you are immortal. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you are bored or you don't want to mm -hmm. exist anymore, then you can terminate your mm -hmm. existence. So it's everything is up to you. Yes. Um, one worry is that um, um, when you terminate your existence, mm -hmm. then that's irreversible. So yes. if you, you know, you cannot change your mind mm -hmm. when, when you decide to stop your immortality mm -hmm. and become immortality and you cease to exist. And mm -hmm. that, that's, that's a little bit scary. <laughs> another, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. another worry mm -hmm. is that um, maybe if we are immortal, mm -hmm. we might be necessarily immortal. Mm -hmm. So for example, Plato said that, um, you know, we are immortal or our souls are immortal because our souls are indestructible. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can destroy smartphones or computers because mm -hmm. they consist of parts, but mm -hmm. our souls are incorporeal, immaterial mm -hmm. substances. So they don't consist of any parts. So mm -hmm. even if you want to destroy our souls, mm -hmm. uh, you can't. And that's why mm -hmm. we are eternal and immortal. And if that's true, then we are, if we are immortal, we are necessarily immor immortal. Mm -hmm. So maybe it's not an option to become mortal. Yeah. So mm -hmm. if, uh, Plato is right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, that, that, that's, a, that's the um, Plato, Plato's answer. And mm -hmm. that answer, uh, again, makes me um, sc feel scared. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so um, we, I, 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 I can't, that means, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I can't die mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. uh, I do to myself. Right. Yeah. 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 So it's not <laughs> your choice. If you're immortal, you just have to mm. exist eternally. And so we have yeah. to, in that case, we, uh, we have to endure right. <laughs> the, uh, that situation and living forever and forever. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't know, in, in, in the, as a soul, pure soul. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So if you, <laughs> suffer mm. from thanatophobia, the fear of mm. immortality. That, that's very ah, scary because yeah. you cannot uh, mm. change it. Okay. Mm. So, and you talk about mortality and immortality. Mm. And, but I have a slight doubt about the concept of mm. immortality. So where, in your paper, when mm. you talk about immortality, mm. you, seems, you seem to um, think that immortality is equal to live forever in mm. this world mm. or in the next world but you know you you seems to think that immortality is the long long duration mm. of the flow of time mm -hmm. you know in terms of flow of time long duration of um, being alive mm. forever mm. 
in in the same time and space. Mm -hmm. But um, on the other hand, um, we have another uh, concept that that is um, transcending mm -hmm. the framework of time and space itself. Mm -hmm. So some 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 say that um, the real true. Uh, immortality mm -hmm. is to transcend this, mm -hmm. the realm of time and space. Mm -hmm. S then, if, if if we can transcend transcend the realm, this time and space realm, then we can acquire the real, um, you know. So this means we can escape mm -hmm. time. Right. So this is a true mm -hmm. um, non time, mm -hmm. no time, non time. So mm -hmm. this is the true immortality. Mm -hmm. first. So I think there are two kinds of immortality. Mm. What do you think about that? Yeah, that, that's a very interesting suggestion as well. I, I didn't th think in that way, but I think there, that's quite similar to what mm. uh, philosophers of religion tend to say about the relationship between God and time. Mm. So some uh, theists would say that um, you know, God is a perfect being, therefore God exists eternally. Mm. Uh, we exist only for a limited amount of time, but the God exists forever. Mm -hmm. But some other uh, theists would say that you know, God, if God is perfect, then God, sh God should transcend mm. at time. So mm. God is beyond time. Uh -huh. So God is a timeless being rather mm -hmm. than uh, an eternal being. Mm. And maybe we can say something similar about the immortality uh -huh. too. So your, your model says that um, it's not that if we are immortal, we exist forever, mm -hmm. but we just uh, exist beyond time. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's quite nice because that avoids many of the problems for mm. this eternal model of immortality. So mm -hmm. you don't need to worry about the boringness of immortality mm -hmm. or, or having an infinite amount of time ahead of you and uh -huh. so on. So in that sense, mm -hmm. I think that, that model is quite attractive. Uh, yeah. But hearing your uh, explanation, mm -hmm. um, I think that you know, transcending uh, the, the, uh, the limitation of time mm -hmm. means that you know, becoming God Right. Right. So humans becoming God. Right. But, but uh, in Christianity, doesn't this, uh, isn't this a very bad thing, bad or I, I don't know how, how, how to say it in English. Uh, so uh, very uh, uh, arrogant <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> to be, become a God, uh, very arrogant. Right. Yeah, there, there is that element as well. So you, you might also mm. think that, um, you know, if we are immortal, then... Um, we will exist without our physical mm -hmm. bodies. Mm -hmm. So we will become incorporeal, which mm -hmm. is also meant to be one of God's attributes mm -hmm. according mm -hmm. to traditional yeah. theism. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is considered a great making property. Uh -huh. So in a way, you know, we could say that when we die, we acquire one of God's attributes. Uh, mm. Okay, that's interesting. interesting, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> um, this is my last question. Um, so how do you think about the eternal now mm. like concept? So, uh, so, for example, when we live now, mm. this means um, when we live, uh, so mm, when we live now, this is equal to live forever mm. because um, now is forever. So, mm -hmm. so the now and forever is, is mm -hmm. the two sides of mm -hmm. the same coin. Mm -hmm. and there are, I think there are um, this kind of religious thinking mm -hmm. uh, in the in the east or in the west. Uh, mm -hmm. So, do you have some sympathy uh, um, with this kind of? Yeah, one one thing that I can think of is that mm -hmm. this kind of idea can be perhaps can be interpreted as a version of four dimensionalism. Mm -hmm. So metaphysicians often say that time is not just um, separate from whole reality. So mm -hmm. it's not as if there is the material universe and time flows somehow. It's not mm -hmm. like that because whole reality consists of space and time. Mm -hmm. So time is part of it. So in a way there is this four dimensional chunk and that, this mm -hmm. represents reality. Mm -hmm. So it's not strictly speaking right to say that you know, someone died 100 years ago. It's more accurate to say that the one hundred years ago, I mean, uh, at this point in this four-dimensional block, there is this person. So, in, in one sense, these deceased people mm -hmm. they still exist mm -hmm. uh, in this four-dimensional block. Mm -hmm. uh, so, I in that sense, um, some people say that th this idea of four-dimensionalism is somehow somehow comforting mm -hmm. because it's not that there were your beloved ones and they died and they are gone. Mm -hmm. They still exist. 
in this uh, four-dimensional uh, block. And ma maybe that's somewhat similar to the idea of eternal now. Mm -hmm. So by existing right now, you belong to this et eternal reality somehow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I was imagining that, you know, some, especially in Zen Buddhism, mm -hmm. they like mm -hmm. to say this kind of thing, you know, mm -hmm. uh, living now, uh, the people who can live now mm -hmm. intensely is the people who can live forever. Mm, mm, you know, th this kind of religious uh, right. words we, 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 we can hear many times, right. know, especially in Japan. Right. Uh, and my guess is that, again, here, eternity is more closely linked to timelessness mm -hmm, rather mm -hmm. than the infinite duration yes, of yes, time. Yes, yes, right. yes. So by existing right now, mm -hmm. somehow, we represent some form of t timeless existence. Mm -hmm. yes. Timelessness is somehow included in, mm. in the notion of now. Yes. Right. Yes. Yeah, that, that's a very subtle mm. uh, concept. And oh. yeah, it's, it's quite fascinating, I think. Okay. So um, what is your future, future plan of your um, philosophical investigation? What, mm. what will be, what, what, uh, what is your, will be your <laughs> future uh, philosophical topics you to try to investigate. Mm, so I'm really interested in globalizing the philosophy of religion. But mm -hmm. by, f by the philosophy of religion, I, I don't necessarily mean mm -hmm. these traditional topics about the existence of mm -hmm. God and other things uh, more broadly. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, the idea of death and immortality mm -hmm. or pain and suffering in mm -hmm. the world. Th these mm -hmm. topics are included in what I call the philosophy of religion. Mm -hmm. And I want to globalize this field mm -hmm. because, as you mentioned, there are a lot of interesting ideas, not only in Western philosophy, mm -hmm. but also in Eastern philosophy mm -hmm. and even African philosophy yeah. as well. So I want to expand this field mm -hmm. and involve a lot of researchers from different parts mm -hmm. of the world because mm -hmm. I think it's quite exciting to mm -hmm. explore these big questions uh -huh. from many different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Okay. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Well. <laughs>